Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three things. First, an overview of the chronic fatigue syndrome or ME CFS research that my dear friend, Liz Carlson and I are championing. Second, I'm going to give you an update on where we are at with fundraising for this project. And then third, I'm going to share with you an update on what's happening with that research right now, coming to you directly in this video from the lead researcher from the project himself, Dr. John Greeley. So I am very excited about this video ahead. I am a massive Dr. Greeley fan. Not only is he brilliant and incredibly educated, but also somehow one of the most humble people I've ever met. And although he lives and works in New York, he's not been there so long as to have lost that incredible Irish accent that he has that I could just listen to all day long. So we've got great things in this video. I'm so glad you've joined me. So let's jump right in. All right, so first, what is this ME CFS research that I speak of? Well, some of you might remember that a while back on my channel, myself and Liz Carlson interviewed Dr. John Greeley, and he spoke about in depth all the research that he had planned and that we were fundraising for. And if you haven't yet seen it, I have it linked in this video description. I highly encourage you to check it out. It is a great interview. All right, so in short, what this research is, is the research team is taking samples from patients who are enrolled in the National Institute for Health funded Solutions for ME-CFS Center, that was a mouthful, <laughs> to perform genetic sequencing on hundreds of genomes. So from there, they will then analyze the genomic sequence to find the genes likely to contribute to ME-CFS. Now, one of the things that makes this research so incredible and why I'm so excited to, in some small way, be a part of it is that DNA analysis has never been completed on this scale before on confirmed ME CFS patients. And Dr. Greeley is really hopeful that breakthroughs will come from this that will help us with uh, diagnosis and prevention and, and treatment options for people who, who really need it. Okay, now, second. Second, where are we at with fundraising? Now, Liz and I committed to raising $40,000 for this research. Now stay with me on this one for our slightly complicated uh, fundraising math. So we actually only need to raise $20,000 because, because of two very generous donors who have agreed to match every dollar raised until we reach our goal, we actually only need to raise $20,000. So we raise $20,000, those donors match it, we're now at forty. dollars and as of today, as of the time of me recording this right now, we are at approximately $28,000 raised. So this includes funds raised and dollars matched, meaning we have about $12,000 to go. But because of this incredible matching system, we actually only have about 6,000 left to raise because 6,000 will be raised, 6,000 will be matched, we'll be at our $40,000 goal. In short, we are very close to reaching our goal and it is thanks to all of you who have generously donated. So thank you so much for what you have contributed to this research. It is why we are here today, why I have this update for you and it's going to be what is responsible for everything that is to come in the future from this research. If you're interested in donating, there is a link in the video description where you can donate or learn more. And because of all the money that you have already raised for this, things are moving forward. So now for the third thing, got it right this time, that I promised you, an update directly from Dr. John Greeley, the lead researcher from this MECFS research project. So, and now, Dr. Greeley. So I'm very pleased to be involved with this project. I'm John Greeley, I'm a professor of genetics at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I'm working with the Center for Solutions at Columbia University, which is focused on the understanding of why people get MECFS. What the Center for Solutions has as an amazing resource is DNA from over 150 individuals who are clearly suffering from MECFS. What I'm doing with my Columbia partners is getting this DNA into our hands so that we can get it sequenced. That's what the donations through the Kernels program are funding right now. It's allowing us to do this sequencing. It's something that hasn't been done before on this scale for MECFS. And it's going to generate information that will allow us to find out whether there are places in the genomic DNA of people with MECFS that predisposes them to developing this condition. So we're very grateful to everybody who's contributed to the campaign so far. It's been um, 
incredibly generous of everybody to put this amount of funding behind our project. What we're able to do now, and we're in the process of doing it, is taking those samples and sending them to a genetic sequencing company that is going to allow us to identify how the sequences of these individuals differ from people who do not suffer from ME-CFS. And this is what's called the genome-wide association study. And this was our major goal from the outset that we should be able to do this study. Now, 150 individuals plus or minus is relatively small for this kind of study, um, but it's bigger than most of the other studies that have ever been done in this field. So we're hoping that we are going to get more information that will allow us to understand a critical question, which is, is there a genetic predisposition to MECFS? If we see nothing, that's actually an interesting result because it says that there is no genetic predisposition to this condition. It's purely environmental. But if we see some evidence in the genome on chromosome one or two or three, that there are these places that are distinctive in people with MECFS, not only does that give us an indication that genetic factors may be at play, it tells us which genes may be at play. And because we know what genes do, it tells us how the susceptibility may be mediated. So we're getting close to getting those answers now. And I suspect that we'll have the genomic information and the analyses within the next three months or so. So where we stand right now, our colleagues in Columbia University who have been collecting DNA on individuals with MECFS for a number of years, they have taken some of that DNA and sent it up to us here in the Bronx where it's now sitting in a freezer in the laboratory outside. One of my lab members is getting that ready to send off to a company that's going to do the sequencing of that DNA. And that's what we're using the donations for, to pay for this sequencing. Once they've done that sequencing, we'll have the data returned from the company in a secure way to the computers that we have here in our medical school. And that's where my colleague, Dr. Sri Lakshmi Raj is going to step in. She's a population geneticist and she's expert in the field of doing this type of analysis called a genome-wide association study. And basically what we're looking for is to see where in the genome could there be places that are associated with a risk for MECFS, are, which are the genes that could be mediating this effect and thereby understand the genetic predisposition that some people may have to this condition. So one of the goals of what we're trying to do here is to come up with a diagnostic test, something that will allow people to be recognized to have MECFS. It's something that we don't have right now. Now, my focus is on the genetics of this condition, but this is not like where you do prenatal screening and you're looking for Tay-Sachs disease and it's a yes or no outcome, we're probably going to have hints that say you're more likely to have MECFS or less likely to have MECFS. But that information by itself is not going to be enough, but it could be very valuable in the context of a suite of tests that together indicate that you have this likelihood of having MECFS. Um, I am working with some extraordinarily talented colleagues around the country through the Center for Solutions at Columbia University. There's a colleague working on the West Coast, Oliver Fien, who's doing this amazing metabolic work. He's finding changes in individuals with MECFS. If you have a combination of genetic information, metabolic testing from testing somebody's blood, and a clinical examination that suggests that the person has a set of symptoms that, that add up to MECFS, this combined picture could be enough to say, you have MECFS, this is what we need to be focusing on to allow people to get past these hurdles that they face when they go to their physician who basically don't know very much about the condition and don't recognize how debilitating it is for the sufferer. So if we can get to that point, and if I can contribute the genetic component to that big picture, I'll be very happy that we're delivering something of value to a very neglected group of patients. We've been trying to get the NIH to give us money to do this very small pilot project for a long time, and they, they kept saying no. So what uh, Liz and Raylan did has, has basically unlocked something that was impossible. Um, so this, this, is, this is great. 
And if we can generate something, that's when the NIH will, will say, okay, so you've actually done it with 150 something patients. Now we're prepared to invest in you. Sometimes you just need these relatively smaller investments to unlock the door to, to bigger funding. So it, 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 you, you're, the impact of what you are doing uh, could go uh, much bigger in, in terms of amplification. So thank you to all of you who have already donated. And if you are interested in donating, again, that link is in the video description. And until we reach our fundraising goal, every dollar will be matched and your impact will be doubled. And another way you can help is by sharing this video. The more people that we put this in front of, the better chance we have of reaching our fundraising goal. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.